I've had a lot of people asking me about well, where's the parent selector. I even, I've done a poll on Twitter saying like if you had a magic wand and you could do something in CSS, what would you do? And so many people said they'd love a parent selector. And sadly, we don't have a parent selector yet. But as you can see here on the screen now, there is a way to actually manipulate a parent based on what's going on inside that parent. Now it is a little bit uh, specific on how it can work, so it's not all use cases, but it's still really, really awesome. So we're gonna be looking at how that can work in this video. Hi there, my name is Kevin and welcome to this channel. If you are new here, this place is all about learning how to make the web and how to make it look good with weekly tips, tricks, and tutorials. We're going to be looking at this thing that's as close to a parent selector as we can get, which is focus within. It is one of those things that's gone under the radar a little bit. You don't hear a ton about it, but you can do some really fun things with it. So at first, we're going to explore a very basic example of just how it works to give you a bit of an idea of, you know, what's going on. And then I'm going to look at a way that I actually use it on my own site or one of my sites um, and a way that just helps with user experience a little bit. And hopefully it gives you a few ideas about how you could be using it in some of your own projects as well. So let's jump right into it here. Um, I do have the code open. So this is my site. Um, this is is a course that I'm putting together about CSS. So if you are interested in it, I'll talk more about this at the end. And you can see here, I have this form and you can come in here and put your name and email address and subscribe to get updates and you know, the type of thing you see a lot. And focus within, it does require elements that can be focused on. So this could be, you know, something like this. And we'll see another example of something too that could work. But um, form elements are the things that gain focus the most often. So as a quick example, I can do my CTA, which is this box here. This is my, if you looked at my markup, this is just a class CTA on this whole thing here. Um, and just to show you that that is that, we'll change the background on this guy to red just really fast so we can see, and I have to refresh here for some reason, but we can see that it has come in as red. Um, but obviously we don't want that to be happening. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this red here, but I'm going to come here and I'm going to do a colon and write focus within. And what this means is uh, we can fo it's looking at when any child inside of it has focus. So let's refresh that. You can see it's gone back to normal. And now if anything within my CTA gains focus, it's going to change the background to red. So if I click here, it's gone to red. So you can see as long as one of those has focus, it is red. And if I click anywhere else and the focus is gone, it goes back to normal. And this would include the button. So if I'm here and I tab and then I tab, my focus is here. So it's still working. So as a really uh, basic example too, I do have a link somewhere in the page. There we go. We have a link right there. So I should be able to tab onto that link and gain focus. So you could push this a little more with links. I don't think it would be as practical um, because obviously focus states on forms like this, you could actually use if you have, um, you know, this would also work on mobile. Whereas with links, you know, people don't keyboard navigate too often, but just to show you that it would work. So I did body, uh, body focus within on the, uh, within, there we go. And I said, um, I don't know, let's do something crazy. Font size is two rem. So we're going to increase the font size. Not sure why. So now, uh, actually I might have to refresh the page and even I'm going to throw an important on here just to make sure that it actually works. <laughs> Cause I don't know what other code I have on here and you can see, Whoa, there we go. The fonts all got bigger. So if one of these is selected, the fonts are bigger. And if I go out, they shrink back down. But I have a link here, and if I tab onto that link, so there's focus on that link, all the fonts got bigger again. Uh, and just to show you, you know, it's kind of weird with that. So I guess if I did a color red, so our font color is also going to change. And you can see there, when I tab onto the link, it switches. And when I tab off of the link, or I'm tabbing off, so it's going to another link. Um, when I click off, it all goes back to normal. Now, I definitely would not do that. But I just want to give you an idea of how focus within does work. Now I did say I'd show you how I'm actually using it on this site. So background changes would be a little bit weird. Um, but one thing I wanted to do on my CTA actually was on hover, I did want to give a increase on my scale. So here I did a transform of scale 1.1, not a big one, but just if you're coming down on the site and then you get to here and I got to refresh, um, you can see I, I wanted this sort of effect to go on where it just it grows. It becomes a little bit more important as you're coming down on the site. And if your mouse is in the middle, you'd see it do that. So maybe it would make you stop and pay a bit more attention. Um, but the only problem is, you know, someone might click in here and then start writing. So I'm writing my name. That's fine. But imagine somebody is here and they click here and then they move their mouse away and it all shrinks down. 
I didn't really like that. I found from a, a user experience perspective, that's kind of weird. And then they'd come up and it would grow and then they'd move their mouse away before they start typing and it shrinks away again. And that's kind of awkward. So this is where I could do dot CTA focus within. And with both of those in there, let's refresh the page. And so we're here, that's all good. I hover on top and I, oh yeah, I do want to sign up. So I click in there, it's working. But now if I move my mouse away, because there's focus in there, it's not actually shrinking away. Huh, that's kind of cool. And then as soon as I'm done, I hit subscribe, whenever that's something else, but maybe I go, I don't really want to sign up. You should sign up though, it's a good course or hope it should be a good course. Um, but if you decide you don't want to sign up and you click away, then you can just keep going and read a bit more about what's going on. So uh, same thing here, you can see it works. I hover off, it's okay. I don't need to be hovering on top of this. And then when I go away, it does that. And on mobile, this would have a similar effect, um, but on mobile, obviously the hover won't work, but as soon as somebody clicks in, it would grow a little bit. Um, so it just puts a bit more importance on what they're doing. And I do like the overall experience that that does uh, lend to my users. So overall, it's a really simple selector. As I said, it's not quite a parent selector, but you can, it's more like saying, you know, this, if something happens to one of the children in here, I want my parent to be affected, which is usually what we want a parent selector for. Anyway, I think this is a really cool use case. If you have other use cases that you could use this for, you're going like, you know, when I found out about focus within my mind started racing a little bit on the cool things that I could do. So if you have any cool ideas, please leave a comment down below and let us all know about it. As far as this course goes, if you are interested in it, the name of it is CSS Demystified. It is a, this is a course for people that have started to learn CSS. They've started to understand it. They've started to figure it out and then they've hit a bit of a roadblock. There's just, they can't quite get to the next stage. They're able to do certain things with it. They understand the basics, but oh, it's frustrating. <laughs> I know the feeling CSS can be extremely frustrating. I'm going to help you get past that frustration. And that's really what this course is about. It goes into the fundamentals of CSS that aren't properly taught. That's the main focus of this course really is to make sure people understand how it's meant to work in a way that they don't really teach too often. Um, we're gonna be looking at things like stacking and formatting context. We're also gonna revisit the cascade a little bit because as people think they know the cascade, they see it as really simple, but there's a lot more going on in there than you might really realize. So it's to get you rooted in these fundamentals of CSS that make you realize there is a logic behind it. It's not this language that sometimes seems counterintuitive. It isn't. There's logic behind how it's actually working. And I want to make you see that logic and all of a sudden make you realize that this isn't such a bad language after all. And once you see that, that's when things like focus within and all these other things start coming in and you're going, wow, this is actually really cool and really exciting. And my whole point of this course really is to get people beyond that frustrated point in CSS and to get them enjoying it as much as I do because I love CSS and I hope that comes across in my videos and everything else that I'm doing. So if you are interested in that course, the link for it is down in the description below, should be the first thing there. And I really hope you do sign up for it. I'm aiming for an August uh, release. So this August, I'm hoping to have it come out. You might've seen an old video where I talked about it where it should have already been out. It's gotten delayed a little bit, but I am starting to work on it now. It's coming together. I'm really excited about what this course is going to be. So if you do sign up for the updates there, you're going to get weekly updates starting on July 1st, and I'm going to be talking a lot about it. Now, one thing with this is the course will only be open for one week. So that's also why I'm asking people to sign up um, because I don't want you to miss it. If this is something that you think will be interesting for you, um, I'm going to open it for one week, get as many people in there as we can, but I want to focus on the people that are in there while the court, you know, I don't want 10,000 people in there. I want a focused group of people in there so that I can put as much attention to those people as possible, answer questions, make sure that I'm there to help them out. Um, so that's, we're gonna do a limited launch and then maybe in the future too, we will also do one. So if you go there, it's after August 1st, and you're like, oh man, it's not open yet. Sign up anyway, because I will launch it again, but maybe in about six months after that first launch. If it's interesting to you, go sign up, link down below. Thank you very much for watching. You guys are amazing. A big thank you to my patrons for helping support everything I do here at this channel. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.